Here we go. My name is Leslie Reister. I'm currently the Associate Vice President for Technology Solution Services. I'm Ray Grant. I came to PCC in 1992 and uh, I was here for 10 years. My name is Jim Templeton. I work uh, currently on the computer help desk, helping with calls throughout the whole district for staff, faculty, and students. I'm Tammy Billick. I'm the Division Manager in Technology Solution Services. I'm Lucy Curry, and I'm the Campus Technology Manager for the Sylvania Campus. I'm Tom Crowder. I was Director of Computer Services from 1968 till 1995. Technology is important. Technologies change. We think of technology today as something that's got to have electronics behind it. It's got to be plugged in. It's got to maybe use the internet or an operating system or something like that. But in its purest form, technology is still a tool at the end of the day. TSS stands for Technology Solution Services. At the time, there was no such thing as TSS. As it currently exists, it was Information Technology Services, which was primarily administrative computing. And before that, it was the IT department. So the name is not important because it's pretty much the same thing. What the department does in general for the college, it is responsible for uh, acquiring, deploying, maintaining, the core technology and providing a suite of services around that technology to help people use it. Yes, it was a Honeywell um, 120. It had 32K of memory, four tape drives, card reader and a punch, and then later we added a hard drive, disk drive, that would store 10 megabytes of, of storage. All of the operations for processing all the, the information were done by student operators supervised by our full-time paid operators. And they used that, the computer center as their lab to learn how to process work and keep the records, uh, rec all the record keeping associated with what was run, when it was run, you know, and that sort of thing. Originally, all the registration was done with punch cards. And so students would come to Sylvania, they would go to a clerk, and they would pull up each class, for example, if it had 30 seats, would have a punch card, and there would be 30 of them in that bin with the codes on it indicating that it was that class. And so the registration clerk would go along and pick out of these bins the classes that the student wanted. And then we would take that packet of cards and that packet would then be broken up and put into a huge deck of cards for students that registered that day, and then we'd read them into the computer and digitize all of that and process it on magnetic tapes. I used to go into the old CRC, which was down in the AM basement, which most people don't know because it was a long time ago, and we had punch cards, and you would bring them up to the data center and have them run through the mainframes for your assignments for the classes. And you'd have to wait for those jobs to be run through the card readers. And then you would fight for your position on the lines of, well, I know which one has the best punch card, right? I realized that we really needed to get away from a batch processing environment to an online environment. And so in 1977, we acquired a uh, time-sharing computer system, a system that would service many terminals throughout the college. Good. This is back in the, uh, the big mainframe days when your operator was responsible for running the whole operations of the college. Here's the master control console. All the job activity, job processing was done on here. And you would have to type when you want to talk to your different devices like your printers or your tape drives, you entered it in here. You could tell your printers, special form type of paper, and then on your tape drives where you backed up your data at night. And then um, behind this equipment here would be rows of disk drives, kind of like this right here. And each, and behind that row is another pack of disk drives. And we, each disk drive might have like a work pack, like a student uh, hard drive for student data, one for accounting, one for like research, and different uh, stored devices like that. 
Remember, you're talking about a too big computer room with lots of power, ener energy draining, power sucking equipment. And as the equipment got more older and antiquated, it had more hicc hiccups. If there was a power fluctuation, it would take the whole room down. So I'd come in on a Saturday morning, and what you don't want to hear is silence, because uh, that would just I mean it was a literally a nightmare. Because all the jobs those I was telling you about had to been processed. That was set up by the swing shift guy. All had to be rerun. Those Jobs would take hours and hours to run. So you come in on Saturday morning, it's quiet. So it wasn't just like going down there and do a reboot. You had to go over to each specialized equipment and do a power-up sequence of getting the equipment back online. I think the other transition was the advent of the PC. We went from having dumb terminals, uh, which were basically a keyboard and a screen, and, and had no real logic in them. All the logic was handled by the mainframe to having a lot of PCs come into the college for instruction to start with, but then they began to come into the administrative areas as well. The business office had no PCs. Matter of fact, some areas didn't even have terminals, so only some people could actually see what was going on with the things that were going on on the mainframes. So it wasn't everywhere. I mean, most people didn't have computers on their desks. So then when I was hired in 1986 as a user support technician, came in and that was just the beginning of when we started getting PCs. So we were going from the terminal environment, I mean one of my first jobs when I started here was ripping apart reports on green bar paper that we delivered to the departments so that they could see all their transactions because they didn't have terminals that they could look at. We still used a lot of slide projectors. We still had overhead projectors. We still had TVs, the big CRT TVs on carts with VHS tape players. So some of our first PCs were compacts. And I don't know if you've ever seen a K-Pro portable computer. It looks like a sewing machine. It's a big, huge box. And that was what people would tote around from campus to campus. <laughs> and it was hilarious. <laughs> So it was like taking your luggage everywhere with you instead of a laptop. Very, very first computers didn't even have a big hard drive, just built-in floppy drives. And to run the software, you would have to boot up on one floppy drive and put another disk into the second floppy drive, and everything ran off of floppies. There were no internal hard drives. So that, that's pretty amazing. I mean, in 1986, 87, 88, that's the way we were computing here. We didn't have a lot of memory or hard drives. All the fundamental business processes that a college needs are supported by Banner. So when we switched from the big mainframe days into this database, there was a huge, absolutely huge learning curve. So uh, we're um, and not only that, the technical staff had to get they had to get up to speed and run side by side from the old system with the new system. So then, as the huge learning curve for district wide, people had, they didn't know how to, how to use this new Banner system. They had to get you know trained on it. So it was huge, and then at that same time was when the microcomputers were coming out, the desktop computers you were talking. People had to get trained on that. Our jobs were real, uh, never boring because we would travel to the different campuses, do trainings, uh, do support, help people try and figure out how to get their jobs done with these new computers that showed up on their desks, and uh, we really enjoyed it. That changed how we supported the, the staff at PCC as well because we not only had to support them with the applications we had developed, but now they were using applications on their PCs. Those PCs needed to be connected to our network, uh, et cetera. Banner, of course, was a change for people and a new way to do things, but for many of those people, it was the first thing that really justified having a computer on their desk. So along with learning Banner, a lot of people were learning Windows and were learning Office and were learning how to use a mouse and all of those kinds of things at the same time. So it wasn't just learning Banner, it was learning computing altogether. My degree was in programming, so I wanted to you know, move up into a programming job. And one came open and I applied and I was hired as a programmer, which then meant I got to program in a language called ERMS, which we used to call WORMS. <laughs> So it was a very strange database language on the Honeywell computer. It was just really old style programming. And uh, this was a system that had been somewhat custom built over time. So there were all these interesting little hidden 
things that it did that no one knew about until, of course, they broke. So um, I was glad to see it go out the door because um, Banner, at least, was uh, fresher, newer. We understood it. We'd had training in it, and ERMS was just creaky. We had implemented a lot of new technology that was primarily bond-funded um, in the early 90s. We had, like I said, Banner was new to us. We had all new servers, new network infrastructure, and we had implemented a new telephone system at that time. So through that time period, the technology was fairly modern. It was fairly stable. We weren't on the bleeding edge of technology, but we were pretty far forward relative to other institutions at that time. It was a pretty different environment, though, than what we see today. It was a much simpler environment. We had far fewer servers to support Banner and our administrative applications. The network was pretty simple. We weren't moving voice or video across the network. It was just data packets. Uh, we had a router and we had quite a few hubs and switches at that time. It was the state of the art. Once the library adopted uh, digital, if you will, and once it became electronic, uh, librarians really saw the future, if you will. They saw that they needed to, to be the conduit for information and that increasingly that information was going to be on the Internet. Our connection to the Internet was through the library. The library was the first one to bring in the Internet. So we had an Internet connection that was called BitNet. I don't know if hardly anybody knows about that, but it was all text. So there were no graphics, no hyperlinks. Everything was you had to type in the text that you were searching for, and there were different search engines like Archie and Veronica and some other names that I can't remember right now that you would use to do these searches for your reference and, and your database queries that you wanted to get information. So that was the first real library system where we could get information from other colleges. And BitNet was mainly an educational network at the time. And then that kind of uh, morphed into the internet and the World Wide Web. So, the library was our first connection, and then it spread to the rest of the college. Around 1993, when the internet was coming live, uh, not everyone was able to get access to it. So on the employee side of it, they would have to have their dean, director, or supervisor send an email to the director of computer technology services to be able to say, yes, a technician can come by and install the application software on the computer to gain access to the internet. The changes that I've seen in the IT department uh, is that we've gone from huge monstrous mainframes to smaller servers that are actually rack mounted. We have way more computing power than we ever had at the beginning. People come with their own computers now, their phones, they're connected to everything in the entire world. So the big change is that you don't have to go sit at a terminal and talk to a mainframe anymore. You can talk to any computer anywhere in the world, any place you are. Everything's gotten smaller, faster, more powerful, more pervasive, and it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, when, when I stop and think about um, the capabilities of computers today, and my phone is probably more powerful than the mainframe computers that we used in the 1960s. Our customers, our users, students, faculty, staff, the general PCC community, know a lot more about technology and rely a, more, a lot more on technology than they ever did in the past. Uh, people are pretty savvy with this stuff, you know, and they, and they need it. It's, it's, a, it's a high priority and it's, uh, there's less tolerance for downtime or unavailability of uh, of technology. So we need to build systems and support systems that are highly available, highly redundant, that don't fail very often. That's always a challenge considering how complex it is. Because right now everyone's got two or three, come on campus, they've got two or three different devices. You've got your laptops, your netbooks, your, uh, and then your smartphones. And now which is extra challenging for at least on, on the college's side as far as the network as far as making sure the device is secure, as far as putting our network. It's going to branch on another whole evolution of how are we going to accommodate all this. I mean, make sure their equipment's safe and what the devices that are connecting to our network is safe for our network. 
part of the challenge for an institution like PCC today is not obtaining and deploying technology so much as making the choices about which technologies to deploy because the options are, are increasingly unlimited. So I think in TSS, the, the best role that we play these days is being able to see where things are going and thinking about how that applies to the, the needs that people are expressing. Not necessarily that they're saying, I need this kind of software, but they're saying, I need to solve these kinds of problems. My best, best decision ever in my life was enrolling at PCC as a student. And I sincerely mean that because you know, 30 years of, um, of working at PCC, it's just a real rewarding experience. I've had many different positions in what is now known as TSS over my career here, and it's been really fun and exciting. There's never been a dull moment. I never sat anywhere and was bored out of my mind because it kept changing. There is a good team at PCC. There was then and there is now. It's a much larger organization today, but uh, it's, it's a good group of people who do, I think, very vital work. You know, when I came here, I, didn't, I had no intention of staying here for 20 years. But the reason I stayed here was that there was always something exciting happening. There was always something new happening. Um, you know, we don't always have the depth of resources to do everything we want to do or to do it as well as we'd like to do, but we have enough initiative and enough resources to be always trying to make things better. The organization has continued to grow, both Portland Community College and TSS and all of the staff in it. A lot of people have been here a long time and they've dedicated their lives to this and I think it's been marvelous to watch their growth, the growth of the organization and just the support they have for the college. You know, they struggle and, and have faced the same challenges everyone else does, and I think they've done a great job of keeping up and um, trying to stay just a little bit ahead of the stampede. Um, so I'd like to thank them for all their work over the years and um, the work they'll continue to do.